from your Center for the Arts studios, this is your Ashland University Eagle Sports Update. I'm Kate Seifert. And I'm Noah Kuhn. Thanks for tuning in. After being down 12-6 at the half, the Ashland University football team made an incredible comeback Saturday evening, defeating the Wayne State Warriors 36-25. Up next, the Eagles will host Finley on Saturday night at 7. We sat down with quarterback Travis Tarnowski to talk about the game plan for this upcoming weekend. We've played pretty well, just a couple, um, like in the first half of the Wayne State game, just a couple couple turnovers, three fumbles, that doesn't help early. I mean, we were moving the ball up and down the field. We were executing the game plan that our coaches gave us. It was just a couple couple dumb mistakes that really got us in trouble. And then once we took care of that, we, we did what we were, we were supposed to do. And then just going forward, we, we plan to do the same thing, just execute the game plan that our coaches give us and prepare all week and, and get ready to go for uh, our big rival this week. We're just going to take a balance, you know, run, pass, uh, balance, try and make it as even as possible to keep the defense off off their balance and, and control the tempo. Their offense likes, likes to run a lot of plays. I think they're close up to 90. They're a high tempo, high paced offense. So if, as an offense, if we can control the ball and control the pace, then that'll really um, throw them for a bunch of uh, sorts and get them confused and rattled. But that, that's the goal is to just keep a balance and keep the ball and don't have turnovers and, and, and just control the tempo like we have been in the last two games. It was the same thing as Hillsdale last year. Is one of our rivals, and we only got to play them one more time. And, and I think that was in everyone's mind. It was everyone's mindset that, hey, this is the last time you're going to get a shot at these guys, and, and, and we got to be able to uh, execute it and, and do our best job at, at it. Now let's take a look at our women's soccer team, who took to Ferguson Field yesterday afternoon. The Eagles remained undefeated on the season as they tied Charleston with a score of 1-1. One to one. Sophomore Lauren Goki sent the game into overtime with a goal in the 89th minute to tie the game at one. After two periods of overtime, the game was ruled a tie. The 21st ranked Eagles are now 3-0-2 on the season as they now have a week to prepare for their GLIAC opener next Friday against Lake Erie. The men's soccer team made their debut on Ferguson Field after their three-year hiatus this past week, defeating Northern Michigan 2-0, but losing to the Lake Erie Storm 1-0. They will hit the road again this weekend to face both Northwood and Saginaw Valley State University. We sat down with head coach Oliver Slauson and senior goalie Nick Soraldo to talk about how their season is going so far and their game plan going into the weekend. And what we do know is they're two very good teams. They both started the preseason in the top 25. Uh, both teams made the, the conference tournament last year. You know, four, the four top teams in the conference make it. Um, and they were both in the NCAA tournament. You know, and like I say, we're a new program. Where, you know, and they keep saying seven months, but I started in January the 1st. I had six months, you know, really six and a half months. So we're going to, it's going to be a real good test, but I, I'm happy about that. That's what I want, because we're going to find out really where we stand within the, the conference and, and where we've got to go. And it's not going to be easy, but you, you know, any wins that is easy, you know, what are you going to learn from them? So it's going to be a good learning experience. And like I say, if we go up there and compete, play as much as we can, and if we give it all and it's not good enough, then that's what we'll find out. Hopefully we go up there and we find out that you know, we can compete and we are good enough, and hopefully we have a bit of luck as well. But it ain't going to be easy, that's for sure. Both of them are winnable games as well. I mean, yeah, Northwood and Saginaw are both quality teams. They're in the top 20 for reasons, but definitely both winnable games. I mean, uh, every, every team in our conference is a winnable game. But, I mean, in terms of tactics, I mean, it's just, it's on us, really. There's not really a whole lot of tactic changing. Um, it's just coming out stronger. We've got to value the fact that a point can be a good result at times, um, but we can't get out competing again. That, that can't happen. You know, like I say, because we've not got the experience in this league of whether that's like I say, understanding of the physicality of the league, whatever it is. We've got to go out there and make sure we don't get out competed. Learn from the last game. Make sure we get better, um, and then we'll see where it shakes out. We're either going to find out we're we've still got a lot of, a lot of work to do, or we might find out we're a little bit closer than we thought. But making sure that we, you know, we compete and we compete for 90 minutes both games. So I can speak, you know, confidently just for this year that our intention is to win the GLIAC. I mean, Ali didn't come here to do anything other than win, and I didn't follow him here to do anything other than win. So I mean, this season's all about winning for sure, setting the tone for, you know, the years to come. Because if we can win a GLIAC in our first year, who's to say we can't do it again and again and again and just be repeat? You know, I mean, definitely want to make it to the NCAA tournament. You know, put our mark on this program. The Eagles volleyball team played their first match at home this season on Tuesday. 
They started strong and defeated Malone in three sets to give head coach Cass Dixon her 100th win as the Eagles head coach. She is just the third coach in Eagles volleyball history to achieve that mark. The Eagles will continue GLIAC play this weekend as they will play at Findlay and Wayne State. I think it's good. It's a good team win. We've got a chance to get everybody a little bit of playing time tonight. So try some people in some different positions and see what came of it. But it was good. It was a good win. We're really excited to be back in our own gym, not in a foreign territory. So getting back to our gym, having a home crowd, um, just having the energy at home, it's a lot different. So it's nice to get back, get a win under a belt, and go into the weekend. It's great to be back at Kate's, back home. I mean, the home crowd, the crowd was really great tonight. Um, a lot of students, a lot of family here. So that was, it's nice. It's always nice to be home. You get to relax a little bit, because uh, you don't have to be on the road and, and doing the road things. You know, Finland's always a tough match. Anyone in the GLIAC is, is going to be a, a, a tough match. It's just the way that our conference is. Finley's always a tough rival. We always compete with them. Um, it's always point for point. We go to five. It's always a tough game. Um, we're going to come out strong. We're going to come out excited to play. Um, but we definitely want to get after them. Every week on our AU Sports Update, we highlight one of our athletes who is excelling on the field. This week, AU TV 20's Brianna Gannon sat down with junior cross-country runner Tyler Lance to talk about his recent success and the team's upcoming meet. Thanks, guys. Today, I'm here with cross-country runner Tyler Lance. Tyler, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here in the studio today. Okay. So, after hearing about your love for baseball when you were younger, um, what kind of made you want to run cross-country? Well, you're right. I did really love baseball when I was younger. Growing up, I played all kinds of sports. Baseball, as you mentioned. I played basketball. I even played soccer for a little while. And when I wasn't playing sports, I was watching sports. I was reading about sports. You know, it was sports all day, all the time. But running really wasn't one of the sports on my radar. Not cross country, not track, not anything. The only running I did was running around the bases in baseball. And running up and down the court in basketball. Why AU? Um, you have many other offers from different schools to run cross country there. What particularly do you, did you like about Ashton University? Right. Well, it's always a very tough decision when you're making a major life choice, such as choosing your college. And as you mentioned, there were a lot of schools who had noticed what I'd accomplished in high school and thought that I'd be a good fit for their cross country program. And one of them, as you mentioned, was AU. Well, first of all, I knew that AU had what I needed academically as far as majors, opportunities for students outside of their major, activities that I would want to participate in, and then, of course, the cross-country and track programs. And as far as that goes, I talked to the coach at the time for cross-country, Trent Mack, and when he talked to me, he really struck me. He was a very welcoming guy. I really felt at home when I talked to him, and I knew that he was a coach who would focus on each individual athlete give each athlete individual attention, and really help them accomplish their goals. Having one run already down for the season, and you have one this coming weekend, how do you think the team looks for this year? Right, well, as you mentioned, we had our first race. It was at the University of Dayton. This race was actually a 5K, where normally we race an eight kilometer race. So it was a little bit shorter than the normal distance that we race, but I thought the team looked great for it being a seasoned opening race. Our goal for right now is to qualify for the NCAA Division II National Meet, which takes place in mid-November, and I think we got off to a good start. The biggest thing that stood out to me is the gap between our number one runner and our number five runner. It was very small, only 18 seconds. And if you can do that in cross country, keep a small gap between your number one and number five runners, those are your scoring positions in cross country. It becomes really difficult for other teams to beat you. Ooh, congratulations on that and good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Back to you guys. The Ashland tennis team debuted their brand new courts as well as head coach Lexi Bolesky this past weekend. They lost both of their matches to Wayne State and Hillsdale eight to one. The Eagles will head to Grand Rapids this weekend for GLIAC matches against Northern Michigan and Michigan Tech. The men's golf team finished second at the Malone Classic over the weekend, just one stroke shy behind the first place Pioneers. Up next, the Eagles will head to Grand Rapids, Michigan for the GLIAC North Tournament this weekend, September 17th through the 19th. The men and women's cross country team began their season last weekend at the Dayton 5K Classic. 
The women place first in their three-team field and the men place second in their five-team field. Both the men and women's teams will compete this weekend at the Michigan State University Spartan Invitational. That's it for this edition of the Eagle Sports Update. I'm Kate Seifert. And I'm Noah Clunan. Thanks for tuning in.